All right, guys, so same as the other problems, except in this problem, we're gonna have a spring, as you can see, between nodes two and three. Now, you still have just one element, okay, between nodes one and two of your beam. The spring just adds stiffness, and this problem, I'm gonna do it incorrectly, but the answers are correct, and as I go on during the problem, I'll tell you what you need to do to make the answers correct. This is just the method that worked for me when I was in school, I remember, but, at the end of the day, don't copy me, right? I'm just showing you what I know. Uh, so same thing, right? Displacements, forces, all that good stuff, and the shear and bending. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, because we have that spring, uh, in this case, we're going to have two stiffnesses, okay? It's the beam itself, which is the K equals EI over L cubed, what we've been doing in the past, right, for the other problems, and then obviously the, uh, the stiffness for the spring. Now, the spring goes in the up and down direction, right, uh, in the positive y, negative y. So there is nothing going this way. So you could apply a force here, right? Um, you're going to have some displacement in the spring, obviously, right? As you apply a force here, you're going to come down. There's not going to be any rotation, but look at how I tackle the problem. In this case, let's start off with just our stiffness matrices, right? That's for a beam. That's for a spring. In this case, for a spring, there it's, it's only between a, a node and another node in the y direction. There is nothing going on in the feed direction. I put one and two, right? But I only did that just to kind of give you the general understanding. It's between one node and another. So that's not really accurate, just FYI. So before we continue, uh, remember how in other problems I told you you can add stiffness matrices without these having the same number? Uh, look at the previous examples and you'll see what I mean. But I cannot, if, let's assume all these were numbers and all these were numbers. I cannot add these matrices because look, the EI over L cubed is not present here. So I would have to throw this in there on this one to bring this outside. In other words, I'd have EI over L cubed here, but everything inside I have to multiply by L cubed over EI, the inverse, right? It's like quick scratch paper, right? Um, if I had, pretend this is a number, this is a number and this is a number, right? So let's do 10 equals five times two. And my bad, I meant this one. 10 equals a number, in this case it's one, times all this. But I, I just chose random numbers, okay? So in other words, if I wanna throw everything inside the matrix here, um, I, if I multiply this by something, in this case, I don't know, right? Let's multiply it by three. Well, I gotta divide this by three. That way they cancel out and this is still true. So that's all I'm doing. And that's kind of a, you'll see what I mean in a second, but for now, just I hope that kind of made sense. So in this case, I might have EI over L cubed outside. And then on the inside, I'm going to multiply K times L cubed over EI. And those EIs, L cubes are going to cancel. And at the end of the day, you just have K. And you can do that, right? And hopefully, I mean, just look at it for a while and it'll make sense, I promise. But this is our two stiffness matrices. Before we continue, this is the stiffness for the beam, right? EI over L cubed, it's 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI, 200 inches to the fourth for inertia, and then 240 inches. It says 20 feet, but you got to convert it, right? And I just realized I put Newton per meter. That's not right, obviously, so no big deal. Um, that's just the units. I'll erase that later. So step number one is boundary conditions um, fixed here. So V1 and V1 are zero. Hopefully you guys get the hang of this by, by this point, um, how to identify them, but V1, V1 or zero, V2, V2 is this one right here. Uh, it's gonna displace and it's gonna have an angle, right? If you push this down, you can imagine you're gonna have like a clockwise radian. So that's gonna be a negative radian that we should be getting. V2, it's coming down, right? You're applying 4,000 going down. So we imagine that this is gonna be negative. V3, that's not going anywhere. And V3, when you're doing it, you only have four, okay? You don't have these two. Again, this is only my method of how I did it, and it worked. But, I mean, um, you don't have to do my method. Just stick to the four. Make your life easier, okay? Node three, it's not a an element. You know, it's just adding stiffness to the beam. It's like a support, you know? If you didn't have this stiffness, this 4,000 would be causing a moment, right? 4,000 times this is going to make you a moment. But because the spring is helping it, that means this guy could relax a little bit. Like, hey, man. He's doing a little bit of the work, so now I don't have to do the full amount of work. And you'll see what I mean once we actually get the numbers. But now that we have the boundary conditions, we're going to go ahead and do the global equation, right? F1, M1, F2, M2, F3, M3. 
equals your stiffness. And look at what I did. K prime, I set it equal to K L cubed over EI. So that way this is gonna be a K prime, negative K prime, negative K prime, K prime, okay? So K L cubed over three EI, now I could put an EI over L cubed, right? Cause they'll just cancel out at the end and then I'm just left with K. So that's good, that's the reason I did that, right? So I could just go ahead and start adding the matrices. So in this case, look at what I did. I had 419, right? Let's do the beam element, okay? So beam element goes from one to two. V1, V1, V2, V2, V1, V1, V2, V2. So this four by four, okay? is gonna be element one, the beam. So it's gonna be the stiffness, right? I'm following the, the matrix up here. EI over L cubed, which is 419. And then that, this matrix here, okay? And we already know L, so we know all these values up in there. Now, for the spring, I'm only gonna fill in V1, V1, right? V1, V1, V2, V2, right? Well, in this case, it's from two to three. So it's actually gonna be V2, 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 this position. V, V3, V2, that position. V2, V3, that position. And then V3, V3, that position right here. So, that's what I did here. Look, V2, V2 has the K prime. V3, V2 has the negative K prime. V2, V3 has the negative K prime, and then K prime for V3, V3. Now, once you do that, I mean, you'll put the displacement vector. Okay, my bad, I forgot that step. Uh, V1, V1, V2, V2, V3, V3. Now, we don't know any of these, right? We're still filling it out. In this case, I already did it, but I'm showing you the process. All these are F1, M1, F2, M2, F3, M3. And then similar thing over here. V1, V1, V2, V2, V3, V3. I plug in my boundary conditions. In this case, I know V1, V1, and V3. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, because V3 is not going, oh, we already covered that. V3 is not going anywhere, but we're assuming it's gonna make some angle, right? As you apply this, the spring's gonna wanna twist a little bit. Again, that's not how you do this problem, right? You'd have only this matrix right here. All this is not, shouldn't be on your paper and you will get it wrong on the exam. So don't do my method. So you're gonna have a four by four and you're only gonna have it up to two. You're not gonna have these. And then you're only gonna have it up to, to here, the zero. You don't have these two, okay? So yours is a two by two, a two by one and a two by one. In this case, I went the extra step and just went, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, four by four, four by one, four by one, okay? And I have the six by one. Okay, so once you apply the boundary conditions, I crossed them out, right? V1, V1 is zero, uh, V3 is zero, and boom. I'm left with a three by three. Um, and that's what I do here, right? I gotta solve for these first. I'm sorry, hold on before I continue. Now that I applied these, since I know these two, that means I don't know these two. And since I don't know these two, that means I know these two. Same thing with this one. Since I know this one, I don't know this one. And then since I don't know this one, I know this one. Okay, that's the trick. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know what I'm talking about. But um, then at the end of that, I just plug them in right before I continue again. Negative 4,000 at node two. There's zero moment being applied. And then uh, zero moment being applied at, uh, at the spring, okay? So I'll solve V2, V2, V3. Right, I solve for displacements first. Um, doing that, it's negative 4,000 divided by 419 will give you that number, negative 9.5338. So negative 9.5338 is equal to 12 plus K prime V2, which is that number, minus 6L V2, which is that number, and then zero V3. Then the same, right? Zero is equal to 419, but 419 goes away because you divide by zero or whatever, uh, right? Um, zero is equal to negative 6L times V2, which is negative 1440. Uh, 4L squared V2, which is that number, 230,400. And then zero V3. And then finally for the last one, same thing. Zero is equal to zero V2, zero, zero, everything zero. Now, if you plug this into a calculator, you're gonna get no solution, just FYI. So that's the reason this method isn't right. But for some reason, when I was doing this class, it helped me, right? Um, don't do this method. Like I said, you will get it wrong on an exam if you have a spring, but don't worry, the next problem that I do, you'll be able to see how to do it the right way. 
But um, now that you have, in this case, phi three is gonna be zero. Okay, that's the trick. Phi three is zero radians, as crazy as that sounds. Okay, then you can solve for your V2, V2. It really is just a two by two. Then you get these numbers. Now, once you get these numbers, you gotta make sense of them. Remember I told you, this is gonna cause a clockwise rotation about, about the fixed end, right? So that means, yeah, it's a negative number. So that makes sense. Then V2 is negative. It's coming down, right? If you apply downward force. So yeah, that also makes sense. So we're good on that piece too. Now we can verify them later, but, and we gotta like, we could make sense of them intuitionly. I mean, if that even is a word, but for now, let's just hold on to it, okay? Now let's go to finding the forces now that we found this vector, right? V2, V2, V3. Now we find F1Y, M1, and F2Y. So F1Y is 419. Uh, now we're looking f and y we're looking at the top row now so at 419 times open parentheses uh everything right so in this case zero zero for the first two zero zero and then negative 12 v2 plus 6 l v2 these two numbers okay so negative 12 times v2 is that number and then plus 6 l times that negative number is going to give you this negative number and then you're going to get f and y okay do the same for all of them. M1 is equal to 419 minus 6LV2, which is this number, plus 2L squared V2, which is this number, and then you're going to get M1. F3Y, you're going to have this number, 419, minus K prime, which is, uh, am I looking at the right one? F3Y minus KV2 plus V2, where am I? I'm a little confused. Give me one second. V2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah. K prime times this V2 is going to give you that number. And this V3 is zero. So that doesn't matter. It was only these two. So you get 1769. Now let's see if it makes sense. Uh, we're going to verify the results real quick. Um, there's three things you can do to verify the results. First, I'd like to start off by drawing the, the beam with the forces acting on it. At this point, I know all the forces and moments and all the displacements and slopes. So in this case, F1Y and F2Y, right? And then F3Y. So in this case, I have 2, 2, 3, 1 pushing up. Okay, that is right here. I have minus 4,000, that was given. And then I have 1769 pushing up on F3. Now, do a quick uh let's start off at checkpoint number one and then the moment itself right we got an m1 there's a moment being produced at this corner and it's right here five three five comma three six nine now checkpoint number one is like assume there's no spring okay m1 would have been nine hundred sixty thousand. so this would have produced nine hundred sixty thousand uh pound inch yeah that's the only time i wrote newton meter so it would have produced 960,000 pound inch, assuming there was no spring. But now that there is a spring helping kind of uh, push in the opposite direction, this number is significantly less. And if you take the ratio from this to this, it should be the same ratio from 535 to 960. Okay, that's kind of cool just to verify. And it kind of makes sense, right? If you apply 4,000, uh, you would have gotten that moment. But because this is helping you in the opposite direction, now you have a less moment, pretty much half of this moment, which is a lot of help. So that's checkpoint number one. Checkpoint number two, some of the forces in the Y. You got two, two, three, one going up. You have 1769 going up. Add those two together, you will get 4,000. You have 4,000 coming down. So that makes sense. Now do some of the moments about any point. In this case, I wanna do it about this point. I have 1769 making a positive moment counterclockwise. I have a negative 4,000 moment times the 240 inches, right? Um, and then I also have to add this number. And if you add those two, um, those three numbers, actually, this one times distance, this one times distance, and then this one, you're going to get zero. You should have equilibrium, okay? And then finally, checkpoint number three. The spring, what this means, a 1,000 pound inch, means for every inch that you want to push it down you need to put a, th a thousand pounds okay that's what that means that's the stiffness that's how stiff it is if you want to move it if you want to move it down two inches you got to put two thousand if you want to move it down ten inches you got to put ten thousand does that make sense so let's kind of verify just by looking at the numbers that we got 
1769. Okay, so if we apply 1769, a thousand of this is bringing it down one inch. So that means 769 is bringing it down 0.769 inches. And yeah, look, that makes sense. We got negative 1.769, close enough. So yeah, these numbers make sense, okay? And we're able to verify it that way. Uh, my bad, I'm not sure if you were able to see it, but moved it up a little bit. Um, now that we verified the answers, we could go ahead and start finding the forces in each element. But in this case, it's only one element, but I find it for both. And look, I'll just show you the whole paper. Forget about this section for a second. All this is going all the way down. Just focus on this little matrix here. So beam, the beam is going from nodes 1 to 2. Okay, so you're going to have F1Y, M1, F2Y, M2. And you're going to have V1, V1, V2, V2. And for the stiffness, you're going to use the this matrix up here. You always use this matrix, the, the element stiffness. Okay, in this case, it's this one right here. We know our length, obviously. We know EI over L cubed. So all this is known at this, at this point, right? So once you do that, you do the same thing that we did when we found the global equation, right? We start doing the matrix algebra. So you're going to have F1Y is equal to 419, 12V1, 6LV1, minus 12 times this, plus 6L times this. And in this case, these two are zero. So the first two terms were zero. So that means you only have two terms. Minus 12 times this will give you that number. Then 6L times this will give you this number. Then you can find F1Y and boom, 2, 2, 3, 1. Do the same for all of them. M1 is equal to 419. Now focus on the second row and this column, 6L times 0, 4L squared times 0, minus 6L times this number, 2L squared times this number. So you have these two numbers, right? That you get from negative 6L times this and this times this. And then you get M1. Do the same for all of them. And you get this is the, the forces in the beam, okay? Element number one or the beam. In this case, F1Y is 2231, M1 is 535,000, negative 2200, and then zero, okay? And we're able to verify these later, just for now, just hold on, okay? Again, if you were doing it correctly, you wouldn't have this step right here, because you only have one element. But again, I'm, I'm doing it my method, so I put in the spring as an element, and it's not right, but it's still right, if that makes sense, okay? It's not the right process, but it, I mean, you still get to the right answer, thankfully. So the spring is between nodes two and three. So F2Y, M2, F3Y, M3. And it's between uh, V2, V2, V3, V3, right? Between nodes two and three. So I just plugged in everything I already found, right? Using all the known values here, and then the ones I found here. I just plugged them in here. Then the stiffness is the stiffness I have here, remember? But in this case, I'm not using K prime anymore. I'm using the actual stiffness, okay? Because I don't have anything on the outside anymore, okay? And it's a thousand, negative a thousand, negative a thousand, a thousand. And same thing, right? It works out because look, F2Y is equal to a thousand times this number plus zero plus zero plus zero. So it's just negative 1772. M2 is equal to zero, 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 boom. F3y is equal to negative 1,000 times that, 0, 0, 0, okay, boom. And then M3 is just all zeros. So, again, it'll give you the right answer. I don't know how, right? I mean, I know how, right? But it's just, it's not the right way. So don't do this method. Just try this problem on your own using um, just two nodes. And then you're only going to have up to here, okay? You're not going to have any, the second one. No two elements, just one element. And you verify these numbers by doing the math, right? Um, in this case, uh, if you follow my other videos, you know that once you add up all the little ones, you should get the big one. And this is what I mean. Let Add up all the little F1s. In this case, you have one right here, none 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 here. That two, two, three ones, since it's the only one, it should equal my big F1. And that big F1 is two, two, three, one. So we're good. M1 should equal 535, 291. There's no other M1 in these eight, right, numbers. So M1 should equal my big M1. And yeah, M1 is equal to that number right there. F2, I have an F2 here and I have an F2 here. Add these two together, you'll get negative 4,000. 
and and I just know that you could check with your calculator, right? But it's negative four thousand, and yeah, you have negative four thousand coming down at node two. At node three, you have seventeen seventy two, but node three is just the spring itself, so that is F three Y. Boom. All that's been verified. Now the shear bending diagram is easy on this problem. And I just went ahead and put like step seven, the beam. And it should have been step eight. I forgot to erase it. But step seven is the beam. I have two, two, three, one going up. And I have a net force of two, two, three, one going down. I did have two forces, 4,000 and negative 1769. But you, if you add them, get the net force, you'll get two, two, three, one. So it's easy to do the shear and bending, right? Shear, let's start with shear first. You'll have two, two, three, one pushing you up. This clockwise moment doesn't do anything for shear. It does it for bending, but not shear, okay? <clears throat> so it pushes you up, two, two, three, one. So you go from zero to two, two, three, one. Then nothing happens up until the end. Two, two, three, one pushes you back down to zero. Boom. And that is your bending diagram, uh, your shear diagram, just like that. Now to get the bending, very easy. You'll need this counterclockwise moment, but before you go there, you need to get the area under the curve. So it's just a rectangle, base times height, 2231 times 240 will give you 535440. And since we're above the zero axis, this is a positive 2231, this is going to be a positive slope, okay? It's just a line, right? Pretend this is y is equal to 5. Well, the integral is y is equal to 5x, right? So that's all that's happening here. So start... We start at zero, but since at zero, we have a clockwise or counterclockwise moment. That's either going to bring us up or down. In this case, we have a negative. I mean, we have a counterclockwise moment. And I know counterclockwise is typically a positive number, right? When you start doing summation of moments. But when you're doing shear and bending diagrams, um, a counterclockwise will push you down. Okay, not up. It'll push you down. So you start, our starting point is actually negative 535. It was zero, but because of this counterclockwise, it brings us down. Then the slope is positive 535440, okay? the You're gonna go up, for every inch, you're gonna go up 2231. So we went up 2231, another 2231, 2231, 2231, until we finally go 240 inches, and we end up back at zero. So that's the reason I do this. The reason is, when you do this, um, since we started here, I know at my last point, in this case from 0 to 240, at 240, which is here, I got to go 535,000 up. So I'm at negative 535,000. That means I'm going to end up back at 0. And these numbers are slightly off, 440, 369. That's just rounding. No big deal. But yeah, that's the shear and bending. I hope that problem made sense. Don't worry if it didn't. The next problem that I make, it's going to make a lot more sense because I will do it correctly. So I hope that helped. That's the front paper right there, right? And then this is the other side.